best thing for everybody to do is to not be out here when the explosion happens. Be behind some trucks. Be inside the building, please. Our plan is back in. We'll pull a boot and I'll show you what we do. We'll pull a line out. Then we'll try it with Rag. <coughs> I hear him say that he's got speed on his camera. Stay hard. Yes, hard. And do the dog. Ah, the magic of movie making. Who isn't fascinated with the behind the scenes action? Think you used enough dynamite there, Butch? <laughs> Howdy, folks. I'm Rex Allen. And for nearly 60 years, Old Tucson has been playing an important part in the history of movie making. In fact, at one time or another, almost every major film and television star has worked at this historic location. Well, I've even made a couple of films here myself. So relax for a few minutes while I tell you a little about how Hollywood magicians have made things go from real, that's R-E-A-L, to real. That's R-E-E-L, here at Old Tucson Studios. Old Tucson was originally built in 1939 for the film Arizona, starring Gene Arthur and a screen newcomer named William Holden. With an enormous million and a half dollar budget, the producers fled Hollywood's back lots, searching for a more authentic Western location. They found what they were looking for just 12 miles west of downtown Tucson. Using plans and photographs from Tucson City archives, local craftsmen began building sets for Arizona, using authentic materials and construction techniques. Many of these original sun-baked adobe walls are still standing today, after more than 50 years of exposure to the elements and a devastating fire. After Arizona rap production in the early 1940s, the war kept producers closer to Hollywood. But in the 50s, Old Tucson once again came to life as a setting for films like The Last Outpost, 310 to Yuma, and the famous gunfight at the O.K. Corral. But it wasn't until 1959 that a young entrepreneur named Robert Shelton saw the location's true potential. With the support of Hollywood legend Arthur Lowe, Shelton began attracting movie makers to Old Tucson. And before long, an ever-increasing number of tourists and locals were visiting the location to see their favorite Hollywood legends at work. And the most popular of these screen legends was, of course, John Wayne. The Duke was one of Bob Shelton's original partners in the studio. And as a result, he worked here quite frequently. Most of Old Tucson's permanent sets were built for John Wayne movies. And even today, you can recognize parts of Front Street from Rio Bravo. And just a few steps off of Front Street, you'll find another famous John Wayne location, the Rio Lobo. In the 60s and 70s, literally dozens of big budget films were made at Old Tucson. More recently, Old Tucson has been the setting for films like Three Amigos, Young Guns 2, Ochre Alice, and Tombstone. Hundreds of television producers have also been drawn to Old Tucson over the years, and almost every TV Western series filmed at least a couple of episodes here. Some TV westerns like High Chaparral and The Young Riders were shot entirely on location at Old Tucson. And the High Sea Ranch is still one of the most recognized sets at the studio. Old Tucson has also played the town of Mankato, Minnesota in Michael Landon's long-running television series, Little House on the Prairie. Mike went on to become one of television's most talented producer-directors 
and he returned to Old Tucson many times with his own projects, including Father Murphy and Highway to Heaven. Old Tucson is still a producer's dream, with almost completely unspoiled views and some of the most production-friendly weather in the business. So it's easy to understand why Old Tucson continues to attract filmmakers from all over the world. That was great. Let's move on. It's no secret that the excitement of movie making draws a crowd. And by 1995, Old Tucson had become the largest tourist attraction in Southern Arizona, hosting nearly half a million visitors a year. But then, on the afternoon of April 24, 1995, disaster struck. Nobody knows quite how it started, but within minutes, the studio was engulfed in flames, destroying in seconds many of the historic buildings and sets that had taken decades to build. Firefighters fought bravely all through the night, but eventually the flames would ravage nearly 50% of the studio, reducing over a half a century of motion picture history to senders. Amazingly, in spite of the fact that the fire broke out while the studio was filled with visitors, old Tucson staff quickly evacuated the park and nobody was hurt. When the smoke finally cleared and the ashes cooled enough for a closer investigation, the devastation was evident. Immediately after the fire, there were a lot of thoughts running through my head. And first, I guess my first concern was the safety, security of the employees working here and the property. And what I remember most is the smell of the ashes everywhere. And also being able to see the mountains and all the different areas and the views because where there were buildings, there were no longer buildings anymore. I really tried to conjure up a mental image of what the building was that had been standing there and what was inside of it. And that really um, gave me a perspective. And, and I felt that it wasn't that we lost individual buildings, but it was kind of like a spirit of the whole town that had been destroyed. Gone Forever was old Tucson's huge soundstage with its famous Royal Oak Saloon set. Not to mention the studio's irreplaceable wardrobe collection. All of the sets, stores, and exhibits on Kansas Street, and most of those on Front Street, were reduced to ashes, as were the Firehouse Museum, the Red Dog Palace, and the Courthouse Building. Even the 100-year-old steam locomotive Reno, seen in so many films and television shows, was severely damaged by the 2,000 degree heat of the windswept inferno. After we got past the emotion and the sense of loss, we began the rebuilding process by taking stock of our strengths and our weaknesses. We decided to go to whatever lengths necessary to preserve the genuineness of Old Tucson Studios, that is, its charm and history, as well as to continue to assist Hollywood in the development of new film productions. We rebuilt the town and its show venues to offer a much broader, deeper experience to our guests on many different levels. On the construction side, we had over 250 talented craftspeople, stretching their talents not only to build new sets and buildings, but to make them appear to have been built in the 1860s. From a production perspective, we certainly continue to entertain our guests in traditional ways, but we also want to edutain them. That is, in a very fun and entertaining way, contrast the reality of life in the Old West versus the Hollywood portrayal of the West. All in all, the rebuilding process took a little over two years. Today, when visitors enter Old Tucson Studios, they're quickly transported into another era, an era rich in the history and heritage of the Old West. Just inside the front gate is the Arizona Theater, Upon entering the building, 
Visitors can see what remains of Old Tucson's historic wardrobe collection. There's also a brief film presentation which covers the history and cultural significance of Western movies. Since most settlers arrived in the Old West by train, modern-day pioneers should consider hopping aboard the C.P. Huntington Narrow Gauge Railroad to get a good overview of the sets and attractions to be found around town. Believe me, you won't want to skip a visit to our Arizona theater on your left. This narrated tour of Old Tucson helps newcomers get the lay of the land, and many of the studio's important landmarks are highlighted during the ride. Just like in the Old West, a lot of old Tucson's activity takes place in the town square. There's always a lot of fanfare and falderall when the stagecoach arrives in town. And after the commotion dies down, everyone's invited into the Grand Hotel and Saloon for Diamond Lil's famous stage show and review. You're supposed to meet interesting people on your vacation, aren't you? After the show, explore Old Tucson's authentic 1860s town square. Then mosey over to the town hall where you'll be treated to a show that sometimes crosses the line between the real Old West and the real Old West. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Broken Arrow was one of the first westerns to depict Native Americans in a sympathetic light. It also pointed out how frontier people, isolated from established society, made their own rules and found their own justice. Now, if we were to choose one actor who came to personify this image of western individualism, it would have to be John Wayne. Oh, I like him. Don't you dream? Yes, that's exactly what I thought. For those talented souls who think they really ought to be in pictures, there's the old time photo studio where they use all the latest equipment and gadgets to generate photographs good enough to send to your agent. Of course, sooner or later, the smell of barbecue wafting across the square draws almost everyone to Big Jake Smoker. There's nothing that satisfies a true Western appetite quite like a hefty rack of barbecued ribs or a steaming barbecue buffalo sandwich. But beware, I have it on good authority that there's rustlers in the territory. Just a few steps east of the town square is the famous Mexican Plaza where visitors can watch several exciting action shows each day.
After the show, visitors are invited backstage by old Tucson's stunt team to see how falls, explosions, and special effects are created for the silver screen. But visitors don't have to love movies to have fun at Old Tucson because the town is populated with a talented team of professional actors whose only goal is to authentically recreate the spirit and character of the Old West. The first inhabitants of this area were Native Americans and one of the most popular new attractions at Old Tucson is the Storyteller Theater. My father told me of Sitsigwas a long time ago, when I was a child. Sitsigwas is the snake, and I had not yet seen one. When By learning the Native American perception of creation and life, visitors gain a whole new appreciation for the diverse mix of cultures and creatures which make up the American Southwest. And speaking of the Southwest, mining played a huge part in opening up the area. So here at Old Tucson, we make it easy for even the greenest tin horn to grab a pan and take a turn at the sluice box. Almost everyone manages to turn a little color, and it gives you a sense of how hard it was to scratch out a living, hoping to hit pay dirt. Of course, successful prospectors get to keep all the gold they pan. Everyone dreams of striking the mother load. So hard rock miners will want to stake their claim in the El Dorado mine. Those who do strike it rich in the El Dorado and keep all the treasure they can pack out. Since the 1800s, one of the most popular and enduring Western traditions has been the rodeo. And Old Tucson hosts a number of exciting rodeo events every year. Be sure and check the schedule of events when you enter the studio because when the rodeo's in town, everybody's invited. There are lots of other special events going on year-round at Old Tucson, and one of the most interesting is the annual chili cook-off. Good chili. Mmm, yeah. The best in Arizona, right here at Old Tucson. Using authentic and sometimes outlandish recipes, Chuck Wagon chefs come up with some of the most flavorful and truly unusual dishes to be found anywhere. Up until now, I've been talking mostly about fun stuff for us older kids. But don't think for a minute that old Tucson has forgotten about those folks with young'uns in tow. So if the little buckaroos start to get restless, throw them on a pony and head for Silver Lake Park. And while the kids are busy burning off a little steam, parents seem to enjoy relaxing beside one of old Tucson's many new watering holes. Of course, the perfect way to cap off a day in the Old West is by taking a horse-drawn ride in the desert. The sights and sounds and even the smells of the desert create a lasting impression making it easy to understand why folks keep returning to the area year after year. Well, that's pretty much the past and present of old Tucson Studios. But before leaving the Old West for modern day Tucson, be sure to stop into McClintic's General Store for some authentic Old West style provisions. Remember, it's a hundred years back to town. And remember to keep a sharp eye out for your favorite old Tucson set or panorama next time you're watching a movie. Here's a few of the more famous ones you should watch for.
Yep. There's been a whole lot of reel put on a whole lot of reels here at Old Tucson Studios. Get the picture? <laughs> so until next time, this is your old pal Rex Allen, hoping you stay tall in the saddle. I'll see you in the movies. <laughs>